Make yourself comfortable. We're all friends here. Good. You're listening to The Big Picture on uh, BBC London. Well, Christmas and January are a time for self-help books, either for w- oneself or indeed for somebody in dire need of sorting out their inner turmoil. Now, although we might despise publishers for preying on our insecurities, we must welcome one publication this year for instant recall of flaring nostrils, dirty cackles, medics called Dr. Nuki, and pinging bras. Look no further than the Pocket Essentials Guide to Carry On Films, written by Mark Campbell. But first... We asked some big picture listeners to nominate their favourite carry-ons. Carry-on, Doctor, I think. It's had all the classic characters in, and all the really cheesy jokes and everything you love out of a carry-on film, basically. Carry-on, don't lose your head. I just like Sid James. I think he's great in that. I always did like him. Bit naughty. <laughs> carry-on, D- Doctor. It's the best carry-on movie that I know. It's most memorable, I guess. Carrying up the Kyber. Well, it's a long way away from home, so it doesn't have any sort of resonances with Britain. But I just like the crowd, the whole gang of them who are in it. They're all pretty stars, although I don't, the humour is very strange. Carry on screaming, oh! <laughs> and I love carry on spying. I absolutely love carry on movies because they're silly, and carry on screaming is just. It's just great fun. Carry on camping. I think Barbara Windsor with a brassiere flying off. It's got to be, isn't it, really? Well, when I was a kid in South Wales in the 50s, my first experience of cinema were the Carry On films. And the very first ones they ever did were the very best. And those included uh, Carry On Nurse and Carry On Teacher. The ensemble play was fantastic. I, it was fresh at the time. It was post-war. It was saucy postcard humour. It was very British. Carry On, Don't Lose Your Head. Oh, Charles Hawtrey, he was fantastic in it. I don't know, it just sticks in my mind as being the best one. I just remember Carry On Screaming. I just remember seeing it when I was a kid and just being absolutely terrified, thinking that they really did that with the bodies and put them in the plaster. The Carry On Doctors? Because I think Hattie Jakes' matron was particularly appealing. Carry On Up the Kyber, without a doubt. There's this superb comedy moment where they're all coming over the pass and they all lift their skirts up, I seem to remember, which is obviously quality. Kilts, dear boy, kilts, surely. Well, Mark Campbell is the author of The New Guide to Carry On Films, and he joins me now. Mark, it's interesting, uh, somebody mentioned their Carry On Up the Kyber, and another chap said that the, his first experience of watching films in Wales was uh, Carry On Up the Kyber and Carry On Films. It, it was filmed in Wales, wasn't it, rather than uh, somewhere f- further afield? Yeah, it was. It was filmed in Snowdon, yeah. It's one of the few examples of the Carry On people actually going more than five minutes around the corner from Pinewood. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it benefits. But they had nosebleeds and everything, and kind of travel sickness. Uh, yeah, exactly. They were very used to that. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, what what's the passion for you about carry on films? I've always been a fan. I think like of the people we were just talking about. Then I think we've all kind of grown up with them, haven't we? They, they would be on television sort of almost incessantly. And I suppose when I was a child, I, I I watched them. I probably didn't understand half the jokes. But friends would say I've got a similar sense of humour. I do like terrible puns and outrageous double entendres. So uh, when it came to write the book, it was uh, it was a uh, it wasn't very difficult, really. No. <laughs> <laughs> but they were very risque at the at the time, weren't they? I mean, I remember being, uh, you know, once things got a bit uh, fruity um, in the dialogue department, I was kind of uh, shoved upstairs to to play with my toy cars. Yeah, I mean, one of the earliest ones, Carry On Spying, they they say uh, they go to sort of a strip club and they ask, oh, "Do you have blue tits?" And the guy says, "No, we have central heating there." So I mean, yeah, that was back in the sort of <laughs> like fifties. Um, so it's, it's kind of a history of double entendre. I mean, if you go to a pantomime, you know some of the jokes. You, you think, oh my goodness! But they go straight over the kids' heads. It's yeah. always on two levels. That's why I think it's so great about them. Uh, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's that one when uh, Harry Jakes is uh, berating Sid James, who's running his cab firm, and saying calves, calves, calves. All he ever thinks about is calves all day. Even when he gets into bed at night, he says, "Where to?" Yes. <laughs> That's a brilliant line. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. So. <clears throat> was it consistent all the way? Because if I recall, there was a kind of tail off, and uh, as every kind of successful uh, franchise, um, people yeah. tend to go beyond the sell by date, don't they? Yeah, I mean, they did 31 films, so it's, it, they stretched the idea as, as, as taut as it could possibly go. And I mean, uh, when Sid James died, his last film was Carry On Dick, which I think is a pretty dire film. But about that sort of early 70s. It just Please tell me it was about a highwayman. Yes, it was. Oh, thank goodness for I that. I think, yes. He hadn't uh, stayed that low? No. I mean, you got the ended up with the proper, I suppose, the, the, the proper carry-on film is Karen Emanuel, the last proper one, which has often got a reputation of being soft-core porn, but, I mean, it's... No, it was a part of the same uh, stable? Yeah, I mean, essentially, it, it's not that bad. You know, the title, like, you think, oh, my goodness, because they were competing with, uh, with uh, the confession series of Robin Asquith. They were tr- competing with more and more sort of explicit TV shows and films and stuff. Um, so yeah, and that was the kiss of death for it. That is bad. We'll, yeah. we, won't, we won't even talk about Carry On Columbus. 
No. Um, but, but we'll hear some classic dialogue, okay. though. No, now listen to me, all of you. Oh, blimey. You may not understand exactly what it means, but since I've been working in this factory, I have made a time and motion study. Oh, I know what it means, Mr. Lewis. And if you've got the time, I've certainly got the motion. <laughs> and don't think I hadn't noticed it, Mrs. Moore. Especially in your main production department. Oh, you <laughs> cheeky devil! <laughs> Anyhow, I'd like to try and show you how it works. She knows how it works, I promise you. <laughs> Mr. Lewis, we are evading the issue. Are we, or are we not, going to get what we want? That's up to Mrs. Moore. <laughs> I mean, on the factory floor. Not ruddy lively. <laughs> All right, that's enough fun. Now let's get down to business. Sounds just like my old man. All right, all right. <laughs> What's the point of even talking about it? We can just play clips for 10 minutes. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, fantastic. Like, somebody mentioned Carry On Screaming there. A lot of people consider that a very good one, just because not only was the dialogue good, but the performances uh, were, were fantastic. Mm. The cast was, mm. was super. Mm. Got the great Harry H. Corbett, mm -hmm. you know, known for Steptoe, stepping in as uh, the incompetent detective. Yeah. And Kenneth Williams with just so many brilliant lines, you mm. know. Mm. Frying tonight! Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. And um, it was, it was uh, Fenella Fielding played Fen the kind oh, of uh, gorgeous, vampish gorgeous. sister of Kenneth Williams. Yeah, she stood out, definitely. Fantastic. Um, I think. I mean, I think that's so good because it it blends. I mean, I mentioned in the book uh, that horror film, the uh, Hammer Horrors and the Carry Ons are, are sort of two examples of a great British exports, and that film, Screaming, blends the two to perfection. I mean, it looks great. The colours, the sets, it's perfect at blending the Hammer Horror and the and the comedy. Now, I remember re reading about Charles Hawtrey and Kenneth Williams waking up in a, a boarding house. And, and down on the south coast somewhere and there's a lot of kind of fag bots and empty rum bottles yeah. lying around on the floor and obviously the fleet were in that night did they have quite a cl close uh, relationship when they were making the, f the films or, or was it the rivalry as in intense as, as William's diaries seem to uh, it's difficult to know when you, when you read William's diaries you get a very very specific point of view a very sort of depressed point of view more mm. than often than not I mean it, Kenneth Williams and Barbara Windsor were very close um, so, I mean, when Sid James had his affair with Barbara Windsor, that sort of split split them down a bit. There were there were lots of sort of rivalries going on behind the scenes. Charles Hawtrey was an alcoholic. He ended up being sacked from the series, and he ended his life sort of in deal, as you say, kind of banned from all the pubs, surrounded, but with squalor. I mean, it's very sad because he was a great laugh. He was one of the funniest people in it, I think. What for you are are the ones that that stand up there against? Uh, you know, not even as examples of the best of the Carry On series, but, but really timeless films. Um, somebody mentioned in your little report then, Carry On, Don't Lose Your Head. I think that's a great one. That's I don't know that one. It's often overlooked. It's kind of French Revolution. Uh, Sydney, uh, um, Sid James plays Sir Rodney Effing with two Fs in a powdered wig. It's great because it's... Oh, I know the one, yeah. You probably remember it. I mean, because <laughs> yeah. they, they moved to a different studio, so for a couple of films, that one and Follow the, Follow the Camel, um, they weren't called Carry On films, and they suddenly decided, oh, they're not very popular, let's stick the Carry On name on them again. So that's why it's got that rather odd title, Carry On, Don't Lose Your Head. And Sid James uh, delivering um, a, quite an elegant performance for, um, you know, uh, an ex-South African boxer? Yes, yeah. I mean, he was cast as... Before the carry ons, he used to do thugs, he did serious parts, you know, he was, did all sorts of things. He ended mm. up in, in Hancock's Half Hour, and then he's got, yeah, he's got a, quite a sort of, he can do various roles. He can, I mean, carry on cowboy, he did a, fa a fairly straight role of a cowboy then. So uh, the carry on films, they kind of started to uh, die out, but the, the franchise was milked mercilessly uh, t till it did. Who who were the ones that um, benefited most from it as a, a series of films? Well, the actors and actresses certainly didn't because they were only paid a pittance. Were they? Yeah. Um, the highest paid, Sid James, Kenneth Williams, they got 5,000 tops and they didn't have any uh, rights to any of the repeat fees. No residuals? No residuals. So, I mean, obviously video was the thing of the future, but they you know they didn't. They don't have any money for the videos, the DVDs, their estates. Don't so that was it, like five grand, and, and I was that a was pop? it. It was a, it was a, just a, a a job. It was a, a treadmill, if you like. They went back, you know, two or three times a year and did these. Nobody thought. I don't think anybody thought that they would live on uh, after they were dead. After certainly, I mean, they went out of fashion. That's why they stopped making them. Then they came back into fashion now, and they're coming out on DVD next year, lovely new editions. So they're tremendously popular now. But yeah, the, the guy who made the money, Peter Rogers, the producer, he uh, he raked it in. Yeah. 
Well, uh, let's hope they don't become so popular that somebody tries to make carry on. Columbus well, they sort of tried it, of it, and I mean, it's Karen Columbus, great cast, fantastic talent, lousy script, cheap and horrible, and the whole thing failed. All right, well, listen, it's terribly end on a downer, isn't it? <laughs> talking, talking about Carry On Films, but it's uh, it's a fantastic guide, though. Thank and you. And the great thing about uh, the Pocket Essentials Guide to Carry On Films is that it doesn't do uh, a kind of 20-page uh, treatise on the uh, social impact of Carry no, On Films. No. It's just, here are the best lines in it. Exactly. It was released here. here yeah, was, he, yeah. he, he was in it. And uh, a paltry three ninety nine it's or something? It's a bargain. Perfect stocking filler. Rush out and buy your copies now, yeah. There we go. There's the first bit of Christmas <laughs> plug we've had all year <laughs> on, the, on the programme. Um, thanks a million for thanks coming in, Mark. All the best. Cheers, thanks. You're listening to BBC London 94.9, London's radio station.